Today's date is 1st July 2016, Friday. An 8-year-old female spade poodle urinates a lot in the past two months. Polyuria is a medical word for this condition. It is abnormal. What's wrong with this dog? The owner brought the dog to the biovets. This is a Behind the Pets veterinary educational video sponsored by the biovets, where veterinary medicine and surgery come alive to pet owners and vet students. This video is a case study of an 8-year-old female spade poodle that urinates a lot. Dr. Singh from the Biovets inquired more and found that in addition to polyuria, the dog has polydipsia, drinks a lot of water, polyphagia, eats a lot and is always hungry, abdominal distension. According to our examination, the main finding is a large painless anterior abdominal swelling the 50% the size of a tennis ball. Dr. Singh needed further lab tests to provide evidence of what's wrong with the dog. These tests are as follows. X-rays. This is the this is an X-ray view of the liver and a con and the normal size of the liver should be about <laughs> should reach the last rib cage. However, this is currently the size of the enlarged liver. This is another view of the liver and as you can see, the enlarged liver has pushed the intestines to one side and this is the stomach and there are a lot of food in the stomach currently. Next, we are going to conduct blood tests. According to our blood test, the high serum ALT indicates liver cell damage, enlargement and necrosis. The ALT is at 1054 U per L compared to the normal which is less than 59. The AST level stands at 431 U per L compared to the normal that is less than 81. An abdominal ultrasound is recommended to the owner and he agrees. The summary of the ultrasound report is as follows. Liver is moderately to severely enlarged with no tumours. Left and right adrenal glands have a nodule each in the cranial pole. Other organs are normal. There are no fluid inside the abdomen. More details are as follows. Here is the ultrasound of the liver and the adrenal glands. The liver, according to the ultrasound, is moderately to severely enlarged. Borders are rounded but margins are smooth. Echogenicity is diffusely increased. Parenchyma is homogeneous and no discrete masses or nodules are seen. The vessel size is also subjectively normal. This is another view of the liver. Next, adrenal glands. One hyperechoic nodule present is present in the cranial pole of both adrenal glands. The margins are smooth and no signs of invasion of the blood vessels are seen. The, for the right adrenal gland, the nodule size is, or the nodule size is at one cm times one point four cm. This is the left. This is the left adrenal gland with a nodule size of seven point eight millimeters to by nine point seven millimeters. This is another view of the left adrenal gland. The other organs are normal as shown below. This is the gallbladder. In the gallbladder, there is currently gallbladder sludge, cause, um, which is cholestasis. The gallbladder wall is thin and moderately distended with bowel. There is a small amount of echogenic material is, that is seen on the dependent wall. The material, the material does not have distal acoustic shadowing or stellate appearance. There are no masses or stones that are seen. There is no dilation of the cystic or common bowel duct. This is the right kidney. It is normal, it is symmetrical in size and there are no cysts, masses, stones or dilations. It is 4.1 cm. This is another view of the right kidney. This is the stomach. It is normal as well and the wall layering is normal without thickenings or masses. It is 4.3 mm. This is the du duodenum, which is normal. The wall airing is normal without thickenings or masses. It is at 3.6 millimeters. The jejunum also 
has a diameter of 2.6 mm and the ileum has a diameter of 2 mm. This is the ultrasound view of the pancreas. Both lobes appear normal with no edema, enlargement or enlargement at 1.4 cm or masses C. There's no increase in echogenicity of the surrounding mesentery. This is the skin. The size is subjectively normal. The shape is normal with a smooth capsule. The parachyma is fine. It's homogeneous and bright. And there are no masses. This is the left kidney. It is normal. It, it is symmetrical in size. And there are no masses of stones present. It is 4.5 cm. This is another view of the left kidney. This is the bladder, which is normal and no masses or stones present. It is thin walled and moderately distended with anechoic urine. This is another view of the bladder. This is the ure urethra, which is normal as well as the urethral wall is normal with no dilation. This is the colon, which is normal. It has a thin wall with no masses seen, with a size of 1.8 mm. This is the small intestine, which is normal, and the wall layering is normal as well with no thickenings or masses seen. Here are some comments about the ultrasound. For the, with regards to fluid, there is no free fluid. With regards to lymph nodes, there are no enlarged lymph nodes as well. Now, let's go on to differential diagnosis. First, the first diagnosis is PDH, which is pituitary dependent hyperadrenal corticism. The pituitary gland inside the brain is abnormal. Next, adrenal gland nodular hyperplasia or neoplasia or both. For example, adenocarcinoma, phacomocytoma. Third, PDH or adrenal tumors or both. Measurement of endogenous plasma ACTH concentration is a reliable way to differentiate between PDH and adrenal tumor. ACTH is low or undetectable in adrenal tumor, but it is normal to high in PDH. Fourth, steroid hepatopathy. Liver disorder and disease due to endogenous or exogenous steroids. Fifth, liver infection, such as chronic active hepatitis. Sixth, liver abnormality, for example, diffuse infiltrating liver disease or tumors. Seven, diabetes mellitus. Eight, diabetes insipidus. And lastly, it can also be cause, it can also be an unknown cause of increase or decrease of serum cortisone. The advice to the owner is that the dog should be sent for adrenal testing, where there's hyperadrenal corticism, for example, ACTH, low dose dexamethasone suppression test, or high dose dexamethasone suppression test. Next, we have treatment of PDH, which is with mycotain or tylosine. Third, there's also surgical removal of adrenal tumors if present. Abdominal ultrasonography is a more sensitive way to identify adrenal tumors or net nettles, including liver metastasis or invasion into the vena cava blood vessel. Lastly, we have radiation. Well, the Poodle's prognosis, it has been reported that the maximum number of years a dog with hyperadrenal corticism can live is two years. For the credits, the current narrator and video editor is Rosanna. Dr. Sin Kong Yen is the in-house veterinary surgeon uh, and Dr. Daniel Singh is also the veterinary surgeon. For more videos, visit www.tapayubets.com slash videos.htm. For more information, visit www.tapayubets.com. Our telephone number is 6254-3326 or for hand, um, or the handle number is 9668-6468. Our email is judy at tapayabets.com. Thank you.